Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. man. It's a lot of words. Did you see me? There's, it's not a lot of words. You're being kind. It's a normal amount of words. I just couldn't say the right words. I don't know why. I need more coffee. Look, What's they, in we the have cup? coffee. I know. I've watched this show. Apparently, before. not what I need. <laughs> um, how is your life? How's everything going right now? How's summer? It's as hectic as your morning is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I love that I've, that's never happened. Never been, like, sometimes you have days where you're like, oh, I can't hit that note or sure. something. But you never have days where you're like, no, I can hit the notes, but I can't actually read or I can't, I can't say the words. Like, that was, <laughs> and you were here for it. I'm so happy for All that. All four takes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There might have been more than four, John. You're being <laughs> kind. Um, okay, so it's been a couple years, though, since yeah. touring. So what do you do? What does John Bon Jovi do when you're not touring, when you're not being John Bon Jovi? Yes. Um, oh, my goodness gracious. You know, I, I was writing and recording a new record with the guys. Yeah. And uh, doing this documentary, archiving everything in our whole world because it's our 40th anniversary. That's so cool. <laughs> Industry. It's a hard thing. It, 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 yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, it is. Uh, 40 years is a long time to be yeah. doing what we do at this level. And, uh, and yet, I'm excited. Whenever you write a new record, you think it's the best thing you've ever done. I know, everybody, I know we all say that. Yeah. We send like tools in our interviews, but it's true. We think it's like the best. It is the it best is. thing because be you're progressing. You wouldn't put it you're out evolving. if you didn't think it was the best thing you'd ever done. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, so we have a new record and this documentary, a uh, four part docuseries on Hulu, which has been fantastic. Yeah. And it's both a, a retrospect and a look ahead. And, you know, and then I also had a, a vocal surgery, so I wasn't going to be able to come out there and sing Blaze of Glory that high with you this morning. But uh, I, I will be soon. Well, it didn't matter. I couldn't say the word, so it would have been a great <laughs> pair. It would, have, it would have been a great comedic SNL moment. That's right. Um, you know? <laughs> no, I'm going to talk to you about that because I have talked to a lot of singers that have had to have surgery. Yeah. It, would, it is just terrifying to yeah. someone who... Yes, it's how we work, it's how we make money, but it's also our dream, it's, it's, our, how, it's our therapy, it's our first love, you, you can say. So that's, I mean, how depressing was that journey? Not depressing as much as soul searching, as much as, you know, you had to sort of say, God forbid it's over, it's been incredible, and then, you know, you put your faith in the God above and you say, let's work on this every day. And, yeah. and what you see in the doc happened one in two years ago now. Mm -hmm. So I'm well on the road to recovery. Yeah. You know, I did Idol the other night. That's a little yeah. bit of pressure, you yeah. know? And I went out there and knocked it out. You know, it's yeah. okay. Wait, you feel, you're you. You feel pressure when you get on a stage? <laughs> Not like you did this morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite kind of humor. Just keep giving. <laughs> no, I'm, I am. I am being serious. When you're you, what? At what point do you just go? You know, you, you singers are you've a earned the right bunch. We are a very little club of cuckoo yeah, people. That's true. You know, actors may be cuckoo Touché. in other characters. We're yeah. cuckoo and we're ourselves. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. So we're we're doubly cuckoo. Yeah, we're playing many roles <laughs> inside yeah. of us. Yeah. Last time, we talked about how you worked at the Power Station studio. Yeah. And so when you were working at the studio, did you ever, we didn't talk about this, did you ever run into people that were like oh, your yeah. idols? Oh, yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the, the Rolling Stones, for example, um, I was Never getting out of, of a taxi cab <laughs> one day, and it was shortly after John Lennon was shot here in New York. Oh, and wow. uh, and as I was paying the, the cabbie with, you know, singles <laughs> and nickels, um, the Rolling Stones happened to be getting out of a car. This is a true story. And I popped up to see these flash bulbs going off. And the jersey and me and my band sort of did this to the, to the pops. And the guy was like, please, Mick, give us a picture, give us a picture. And he grabbed me and my little friends and said, this is my band, The Frogs. And he took a picture with us. I would pay anything for, for that, that photograph 44 years, 45 years Let's later. put it out there. Yeah. Where is it? That's yeah. amazing. True story. I yeah. love that he just named your band The, the Frogs. Frogs as well. Never forgot it. I, I don't know if I'd have let that one go. I was no, like, I really? Didn't. That's well, what I came to your mind. I haven't. You okay. Know. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I saw, you know, the docuseries, it's pretty emotional getting back in the studio, right? To yeah. To songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An emotional ride, right? Yeah. What you, again, what you saw in there, it, it was hard because you speak and you say, okay, I sound like me. When you hear yourself back through the speakers, that's when you hear yourself mm -hmm. for the first time. And I didn't sound like me, but like I said, that was 15, 16 months ago. Yeah. So that threw me for a loop. And by the time I got around to making the record, it was, it was all good. But um, you know, the initial reaction was a shock. Yeah. Because of the change. 
Yeah. Um, you know, and so you have to get over that. And the healing wasn't done yet, that's all. Man, I'll tell you, I have never had surgery, but I will say, whenever I was Knock pregnant. on everything. You, yeah, you know, you, I, exactly. Yeah, baby. Um, no, but you, I think you sang with Jennifer Nettles as well. Sure. And she actually told me whenever I got pregnant, she was like, J just so you know, your voice is going to go away. It's going to be weird, but it'll come back. And she uh -huh. looked at me so intensely, and I was like, arrogant ass. I was like, I'm going to be fine. I was like, I literally thought nothing of it. Mm. My voice changed so dry. Like, I cried. I was trying to record things, and I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hit my notes. I couldn't do... And I was like, this is going to come back, right? I freaked out, so I can't even imagine, like, the level of panic, like, emotionally, like, hearing yourself back in the studio and going, that's it's not me. <laughs> yeah, you're like, that's not me. Like, no, that's... I was pregnant, and then... You know, <laughs> it, it was just... What? What? Oh, my God, it's so the same. <laughs> uh, so, wait, you say, you say your, your new album is a return to joy, right? It is, yeah, it is. What um, do you mean? The last album, 2020, was written when we did our first interview together. It was via Zoom. Mm -hmm. None of your audience were here. Yep. You know, we had to be. We weren't here. We were in LA. Yep. You were in LA, yep. and I was in New Jersey, you know, and, you know, Zoom was our best friend. So that obviously wasn't a joyful record. Yeah. Um, with this one, it is a return to joy because I'm coming through the surgery. You're, you're feeling that the light is at the end of the tunnel. And I'm writing songs from a different place as we are all together, as things are going so well with my, you know, my own personal life. I felt like this was an opportune time to turn the tide and, yeah. and write a, a, a joyful record. Plus, it's the 40th. And like I said, you're looking back while you're looking ahead. So there was a lot of emotions, but joy is the one that came to the top. Yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful. Well, John uh, was just honored as Music Care's Person of the Year for his charity work, including work with his JBJ Soul Kitchen, which he started with his wife, Dorothea. Uh, so talk about, we talked a little bit about Soul Kitchen, but what inspired y'all really from the jump to do this? We had been building affordable housing for a number of years, but at the economic downturn of 2008, Dorothea turned to me a stream of consciousness, watching the news one night. She says, now you've got to feed the people that you've housed. And she came up with this concept that really didn't exist anywhere, the soul kitchens. We currently have four of them. If you come in and you're in need, um, you volunteering for a meal, which is empowering. It's not a soup kitchen. There's no government subsidies. There's no institutional foods. It's a farm-to-table setting. But if you came in and set uh, the, a donation, mm -hmm. and it's $30, it pays for a three-course meal for you, but covers a meal for somebody else. So you're directly affecting change. And then if you, you can't afford to pay anything and no one would ever be identified, you'd never know who paid and who didn't. Yeah. And you're volunteering, you just feel like I've earned that meal. Yeah. You know, so that's where on 2020 where I wrote Do What You Can because I was the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. Because that's what has to happen, especially in COVID when no one else could be that volunteer yeah. dishwasher. Yeah. So Dorothea came up with the concept. We currently have four of them in New Jersey. And, you know, we're, we're feeding thousands of people annually, and it's been, it's been great. Our, our greatest hope is to go out of business. Yeah. But it's, I think it's you not told happening me that last anytime time and I, soon. I know. It's unfortunate. But what a beautiful heart. Like, she has, that's, that was kind of her thought, right? Her and, dream. And yeah. she's the one that's, you know, doing it every day. And, you know, we have hundreds of volunteers that come and yeah. thousands of people in need, and, and it works. Man, that's so yeah, cool. Yeah, it's good. That was a look at this new docuseries. Thank you. Good night. You can see it now on Hulu. So, were you worried at all? These are the, these are the reasons why I don't do things like this. Is because it kind of is hard to go back sometimes and relive moments or talk about things or, you know, delve back in. Were you worried at all about? I wasn't. It was emotional when we saw a rough cut together and the band all saw it, you know, together. Mm. So it was emotional, but there wasn't anything that I had forgotten in that period. Yeah. So, you know, I, I Not that was... you've forgotten, but maybe you wanted to forget what? <laughs> the other thing that the director did was he let everyone tell their truth. Yeah. Which is very interesting because, you know, now there's no one sitting next to you going, did you really mean that? You know, did you... Everybody yeah. had their truth. Like their vantage point of how yeah. it went down. Yeah. 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 So Gotham Chopra directed it, his father's Deepak Chopra. Yep. Uh, he's a great director, and, and I had to trust him with it. You mm -hmm. know, I was busy with the record and my health to not get in his way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't at all worried about how it was going to be portrayed. I was fine with putting it out there. Yeah. It was vulnerable. Yeah, no, no, no. I meant, like, yeah, more <clears throat> diving into the past. So yeah. Some things you're like, ooh, let's just, yeah, it's fine, yeah. it's gone. Um, but to celebrate 40 years of Bon Jovi, we thought that we would flip through some photos from John's personal collection, and he'd tell us the stories behind them. So this is oh boy. Behind the Photo. Behind the 
photo. I love it. We've never done that. That's amazing. Okay, wait. So first photo. Okay, here's the first photo. What is happening? That is a pizza oil stained paper plate. Okay, I and got that had part. I had pizza that night and I was trying to convince my parents to give me a, a, some money to buy a Fender guitar because I had had this Japanese guitar called a Univox and I wanted the cool Fender guitar. Okay. And I've been playing for a couple years and I wrote my parents a note in the voice of the guitar. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Bon Jovi, I am the Univox guitar. I'm tired, I'm broken. You should <laughs> retire me. I can't be but, you know, 16 years old at this point. And I think my mother's notes is take two Excedrin and call me in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I'm such a hoarder, I kept the plate. I think that that's great though. It's so cute and clever, by the way. Compounded by the fact that the guy that I sold that first guitar to, mm -hmm. 45 years later, just this last year, sold me the guitar back. Wow. And I wrote a song on this new album called My First Guitar about that. Well, that's a cool story, man. And the pizza oil stained paper plate. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. We live off of pizza, my family. Um, <laughs> we do. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, so, okay, next photo. This is a good one. You and Bruce. Oh, yeah. I love Bruce as well. Sure. Yeah. What was happening here? So I'm in high school and I have a cover band and we're playing in the bars a couple nights a week. And um, we were sort of like the Muppets version of Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes. I had five horn players. We sang a lot of the Jersey guys stuff, but this is 1979. Yeah. So the big guys weren't stadium guys yet. Yeah. And I turned around on stage and Bruce jumps up and singing with me. And I go back to high school the next morning and I go, I got a story to tell, you know, because Did they all the, think you were lying. Cause yeah. that's incredible. And to think that someone actually was there to take a picture of it. Yeah. Uh, so that was the first time that he had ever sung with me in 1979. That's such a cool story. I, I was in high school. I that's yeah. You, it was like meeting Santa Claus. Uh, yeah. I, I, were you nervous? Did you, you didn't choke, right? You did. No. You, yeah. No, no, I didn't. I and killed it with that great, great hair. Yeah. yeah. Great hair. <laughs> Okay, so everyone um, in the band uh, brought bowling balls on your first tour. Is this true? Are you a big bowler? No. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you, you know this now. When you go on your first tour, you don't know what that is. Yeah. You know, you're about to go on this great adventure. Mm -hmm. And so we had a tour bus, and I went there hours and hours early just to sit there and take it all in. And literally, the guys showed up with their suitcases. David had a bowling ball. Alec had a fishing rod. I mean, it was like, where are we going bowling and fishing? You know, and so, I mean, the bus was, we looked like the Beverly Hillbillies by the time yeah. we pulled out on the first show on the first date. And eventually learned that, you know, you don't get a chance to go bowling and they have bowling balls in, in the alley when you get there. Yeah. So my first thing, I brought out a bike. I was a like, bike. I'm gonna bike. Sure Every, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna see the city. Sure I'm gonna do are. all that. I, my bike never left the rack on the back of the bus. Absolutely it never not. actually even left the rack. No. Because there's no time. There is no time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so here's the next one. What's happening here, man? Wow. Ah. Oh, what is happening here? You I rock and roll in. God? <laughs> one false step. That is Moab, Utah, where I was doing the Blaze of Glory video on a cliff for three days and nights. That's all real. That's in a day and age when there was big budgets for videos. Yeah, and, it was more uh, than one day. Yeah. Oh yeah, and yeah. You could, you'd, you'd sleep in that camp and that's how we found America. And, yeah. and it was, I, I was doing that shoot, pretty burned out after Slippery When Wet, New Jersey, and now yeah. I write the Young Guns record. And I'm on a motorcycle with Dorothea in, in the daytime. And I said, this is it, baby. We're gonna go on these bike trips. We're gonna, and we're gonna just be the two of us. And she says, look around. There's people from People Magazine yeah. that are with us. We are not alone. We have entertainment tonight right here. We're just, yeah. I said, yeah, but it's gonna be just like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the two of us, all these other people Except, here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dorothea wrote this in your high school yearbook, which I love. John, write a sequel to Bobby's Girl, but uh, name it She's Johnny Now. Yeah. That's uh, so sweet, love Dot. Uh, That's dot. so sweet. I never called her Dot again. What do you remember? What do you remember? <laughs> what do you remember from that? It was a song I'd written called Bobby's Girl, one of the first original songs I had written, and um, she was dating 
my buddy Bobby. Yeah. Um, and he went off to join the service, as did my other two best friends, and they all joined the Navy. Yeah. And it was my senior year of high school, and uh, you know, I just fell in love with the girl sitting next to me in history class. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, stop. Stop. <laughs> Dot. So cute. Okay, <laughs> what's the next photo? What's going on here? That's my buddy, um, Howard. I love and him. I asked him to induct me because we had come up together and I had known him when he was not yet the almighty Howard Stern as the interviewer that he is today. And I went to see him and um, we both got emotional about it and he agreed to do it. And as I closed the door, I called my manager and I says, of course he said yes. He goes, did you tell him it's in Cleveland? I go, no, that's your job. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> You're like, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, and y'all have a friendship, it. right? A very close yeah, yeah. friendship, yeah. Yeah, that's so cool that it's yeah. someone like that, too. Yeah, I wanted somebody that's been a part of my life for yeah. as long as he has. No, I remember when I got the Hollywood star, they were like, they were like, oh, who do you want to do it? And I was like, they kept throwing out people's names. I'm like, those people don't know me. Right. Like, I was like, what? I want, like, someone that knows me right. to be up there talking about yeah. me. So that's, that's really cool yeah, and yeah, special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, next photo. What's happening here? Uh, I have some very strange kinship with Benjamin Franklin. I don't know why, but there's something in my DNA Great. that every time I, like something happens to me with Ben Franklin. And you know your $100 bill? Yeah. I own that painting. Yeah. Oh, yeah? I own that painting. He sat for the painting. What? Yeah. And so there are three of them in existence. One is in the National Portrait Gallery. One is... When did this love <clears throat> start? So anyhow, I've read too much about this guy. And everything that he's done from the post office to the volunteer fire department to insurance companies to the jet stream to... Innovative, yeah. Without him, there would probably be no America negotiated with, right with yep. the English. That story is that because he was not a United States president, is his grave, it's his tombstone. Yeah. And it was in disrepair. And it was a little teeny article. And I called our office and said, pay for Ben Franklin's damn stone. Yeah. You know, I have to do that. So when they lifted it to repair it, they said that I could come and, and be there for it. I don't know why, but I'm, there's, I, I've worked for him in some previous life. I, no, I think that's so special, it's though, wild. and very cool, like, that yeah. someone touched you like that. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. But, you know, maybe it's Philadelphia and Jersey. And Well, I know why as well. I mean, did a lot of great things, like uh, you said. Yeah. Ben Franklin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, what, you have the paint. That's crazy. Okay, yeah. one more photo. Here we go. What? What's oh, happening? when I was a, a boy, I had a distant cousin who I had not met pr much longer than before this. And um, my dad dragged him to see the band play. Mm -hmm. And he said, the band's not very good, but your kid's got something. And he says, you know, if you ever need something, give me a call. So after I graduated high school, I called the guy, and I said, hi, can I come to your recording studio and just fetch coffee. And he said, yes, hence the frog story years later. Mm. In that building, I signed my record deal some three years later, and that's the bottle of champagne that, um, that I got to sign. And, and then after that, I really never saw the guy much. Um, 40 years later, you know, I'm going back there today for a listening party for this new record, which is just a lot of my history was in that room. That is so cool. Yeah, a lot of history in that studio. Yeah. And that's the bottle. Oh, man, that's yeah. so cool. Thank you. That's so cool to hear, like, behind the scenes of that, man. Well, let's hear it one more time for John Bon Jovi. His new album, Forever, drops tomorrow. And be sure to check out his docu-series. Thank you. Good night. You can catch it on Hulu.